20 years after. Jeffrey Sumner reporting. To men like Group Captain Jamie Rankin, two DSOs and DFCs, it seems perhaps like yesterday. The old spits and hurries never let you down. To think it was all 20 years ago. 20 years. Well, time has made its mark. Look at that runway. Lots of the old airfields gone to pot. No wonder, really, they're not completely overgrown after all this time. See this kind of thing in many parts of the country. Bomber stations, fighter stations... Sign of the times, of course. Control tower, cram full of hay. The old man would have loved that. Battle of Britain survivors are mostly civilians now. Among those we met was Wing Commander Paddy Barthrop, DFC, AFC. Does his own shopping these days and runs a hire car business with another of the few, Brian Kinkum. Paddy shot down nine enemy aircraft, by the way. Group Captain Hugh Dundas, DSO and Bar, DFC, now a journalist. He commanded 601 Squadron. Today, he's a keen fisherman and a family man. Nowadays, a TV executive, Squadron Leader Anthony Bartley, DFC and Bar, shot down 15. And this was a favorite haunt for many of the few. Mrs. Kath Preston remembers them all so well. One was Group Captain Johnny Kent, DFC and Bar, AFC, Polish VC, a Canadian with a score of 18. The pubs preserved an old blackout screen that the pilots used to sign. Famous names. Though the owners of them would deny it. However that may be, the derelict airfields of today were active enough 20 years ago. The Royal Air Force faced the crisis. Devoted ground crews, all ranks. The odds heavily against them. There was little time to rest and relax during the critical months of the battle, July to October 1940. Yet the few seemed as light-hearted as if the battle were already won. Scramble! Thanks to radar, Fighter Command was able to deploy its squadrons day after day in time. time to intercept and attack the streams of escorted bombers flooding in across the channel. Destroy the Royal Air Force before invasion. That was the Nazi aim. How differently it worked out. Nazi hopes lay in wreckage and ruin along the frontier of freedom. One Nazi plane crashed in the heart of London, just a detail of victory. Less than a thousand young men had saved Britain. At Biggin Hill Chapel, tribute to some of those who fell was led by Group Captain Sailor Milan. In thankful remembrance of the pilots of this sector from Great Britain, the British Dominions and Allied Nations, who by their sacrifice helped to win a great victory, I unveil this memorial in their honor and to the glory of God. Men to whom we who survived owe an eternal debt of honor. Seen with Group Captain Douglas Bader, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, Fighter Command Chief, with some of the few. Among them, another famous fighter pilot, Wing Commander Stanford Tuck. Legless Bader was to lead the flypast at the first post-war anniversary of the Battle of Britain. First of many national tributes to those who fought and those who fell, winning a victory to rank with Trafalgar and Waterloo. Listen again to Sir Winston Churchill's tribute. In the field of human conflict, 
con sâu mắt sâu bài sâu mini chút sâu chú For the Royal Air Force today, what a glorious heritage from 20 years ago.